In this video, I'll show you how to create photoreal landscapes in Blender. This tutorial is not about the values to type in or the buttons to press, rather it's a workflow that should work for pretty much any scene. The first step for any render really is the idea. This is arguably the most important step. So really try to nail it down by gathering as much reference as you can. And I mean, really go crazy. You, you can never have enough. Next, you'll want to block out your scene. And I promise you, Doing this will make you so much faster when doing any scene in Blender. Don't worry about textures, models, anything like that. Just focus on the placement, real world scale and the lighting. When doing this step, I recommend restarting the scene at least once. For example, here's my first block out and here's my second one. This one is exactly what I'm going for. And some people restart their scene even later in the process, but I find that a bit extreme because I don't have a month to make a scene. I have like three days. So I recommend just doing it in the block out phase. Just as a side note, this is the result of a whole day of experimentation. So never stop retrying until you're happy with the result. But once you are, you can move on to detailing. So to start, swap out the placeholder models. When doing so, make sure to pay close attention to the reference, because I for example used these rock models here, but that looked terrible. And one of the reasons was that rocks usually get rounder if they're in any sort of water setting. And I saw that in the reference. Also when doing this step, it's important to use high quality models. And for most nature scenes, the trees are arguably the most important. Which is why I made them using this really handy add-on called Treesy. You just have to place the cursor where you want the tree to be, then choose the season, tree type and tree you want and click spawn to add the tree which you can then customize or what I think is the coolest, you can add a customizable wind animation with just one click. By the way, if you want this add-on too, then I do have an affiliate link in the description which just means that if you decide to get the add-on, I get a small cut which helps support me and the channel. So thank you if you do decide to get the add-on. While you're swapping out the models, you will probably have to optimize your scene. To do that, I'd recommend to use Proc. A really great free add-on to do that is the Bugapie add-on. Because once you have installed it, you can just click the model you want to proxy for, hit J and then click proxy. Now if you've swapped out all the models but the scene is still looking bad, then the answer could be that the trees or other foliage isn't diverse enough. In this case for example, I only have tall trees but no small ones which just looks weird. But once I add them, it immediately looks better. Generally it's just important to not stop tweaking. So more variation in the leaves, because nature is random, leaves and dirt on the water, moss on the rocks, a singular foliage leaf that really is most of the secret to making realistic or just good looking renders. Once the scene is done it's time for some compositing. This really is that secret sauce that makes a render way more realistic. The first thing I'd recommend doing is to soften up the render a bit. Because lenses aren't perfectly sharp, but renders are, which can look pretty unrealistic. Then add a tiny amount of lens distortion and chromatic aberration to further emulate the lens. And lastly, I'd add some sort of noise. This can be just ISO noise or what I prefer, film grain. Just to emulate the camera sensor. After rendering, the last step is the color grade. And I really enjoy this step because it just kicks the render up another notch. Bam! Just really quick, lift are the shadows, gain are the highlights, use the temperature to control the white balance and the green tint to set the amount of green. But now that's done, so here's the render I created. Thanks for watching.